He was found without a mother. He was four weeks old. He couldn't walk. I was like, I want to give this guy a chance. I'm Elena, and this is Picklin's story for GeoBeats. I started fostering with Austin Pets Alive here in Austin, Texas. Come here, Picklin. I just took in regular kittens. Never really thought about a special needs animal. Picklin. I saw his picture and something wasn't right. His little arms, and they were they were kind of twisted, almost like this. He should have been able to keep up with his mom and siblings, but he got left behind probably just because he couldn't walk. He couldn't even get out of his waist because he couldn't walk. I knew I wanted to foster him. So I took him in and it was a lot at first. Sweet Picklin. I had to keep a pretty close eye on him just because I had to constantly make sure if he did go to the bathroom. Eventually he did learn how to walk even with his arms all twisted. He just kept pushing through like he had no idea that he was any different. It's been a journey trying to figure out exactly what's going on with him. He just looks a little different in the face. By the time I adopted him, I went ahead and raised the money for the MRI that confirmed that he did have fluid on his brain. Brooklyn. And then as far as his legs go, we really weren't sure what was going on. The bones are all normal. And then we did the little leg braces on his arms that straightened them out. He loves to eat. He's always been a huge eater ever since I got him. I have children, so he likes to get up when he sees there's lots of stuff going on or the other animals are in the living room with us. He does have some mental slowness, but he's never seemed to be very fearful. Everybody he meets is a friend. He has never met a stranger. He's happy to see the dog. He's happy to see my older cats. He's happy to see children. I don't think I've ever had a connection with an animal like I have with Picklin. It's hard to explain. It's almost like he knows that he's comforting to me, and I know that I'm comforting to him. There's been things I've struggled with in the last six months, and he's come to me during those moments where normally he'd be napping or eating. When I've been at some really low points for different situations, he will come to me, and he knows that I need him. I'd look at him and I'd be like, he just gets up every day and he's purring and he just keeps going. And I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. Veterinary medicine is different than human medicine. I've found out it's not as advanced in many areas. He doesn't have something that has enough research and knowledge for any sort of treatment. And it is progressive. It's gonna get worse. I have no idea how much time I have with him, which makes me really sad thinking about that. But it's like another lesson he's taught me is just focus on today. He's happy right now. I think that he came into my life on purpose. I don't think it was an accident. A lot of places just put animals like that to sleep and don't give them any sort of chance. Just because an animal has problems, you don't have to just get rid of them. I get so many people telling me, he's so lucky to have you. And I want people to know that he's probably done more for me than I have for him. We have a great bond that I didn't think was capable of having with an animal. Sweet Pippin.